And hello and welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It is time to get into our second series here at the beginning of the 2023 season in APAC. I am Achilles here alongside Avril, as per usual. We'll be guiding you guys to the action for our last two sets of the evening. Coming up next, though, we have the Dallas Fuel versus the Guangzhou Charge. The first time we get to see Dallas play in the Eastern region here. They've just won a championship in 2022. Lifted the trophy, as you can see here. And uh, they retained a fair few number of, I think, star players, some core members of the roster. Most importantly, Rush has returned to the team. If you paid attention to Twitter recently as well, Pasmo actually put out a tweet that says that Rush is, technically speaking, the sixth player on this team. But they probably won't need a sub. He's not going to end up playing. Don't sure. worry, they're not subbing anyone out. Harmon's going to be in the entire time. They trust their five-man roster. They're still on the lookout for maybe a sub in the future. But for now, like a lot of other teams that are just relying on five-man rosters, they believe in this five to make it all the way again. That they do. And we'll go ahead and take a look at the starting five in just a little moment here to go ahead and refresh everybody's memory. Mine as well, because uh, it's been a good long while since we've gotten to be in this position to cast some good old-fashioned Overwatch League. So I'm excited to see how everything's going to unfold. Already, though, off the rip, a fantastic series to start with here in APAC up with uh, Dynasty barely being able to scrape by that victory over the Infernals, telling them, you know, hey, welcome to Seoul. It's still our city, at least for now. But we'll go ahead and take a look at the Dallas Fuel. Yeah, so it's not just going to be the natives of Seoul between the Seoul Infernal or the Seoul Dynasty to take it through. The fitting champions, as mentioned, as we get a look at the Dallas Fuel roster. Some new faces on there as well. And Harmon, such an important player returning. That he is. I mean, another return there. I mean, the first player that we saw was, you know, MCD. Got to see him a little bit in the offseason playing alongside the Dallas Fuel in the show match that, uh, you know, myself and Wolf covered over here in, in South Korea. And overall, looked quite good on his return to the stage. But we'll have to see how he now fits in uh, now that there's, you know, months of practice, plenty of time for these guys to get, you know, very acclimated to one another. So time will tell whether or not they're going to still be that dominant force. On the other side is Guangzhou Charge as well, where we'll get to introduce their roster momentarily, but they actually haven't played any NA teams in the last year. They've actually got no history versus the Dallas Field, so uh, the Guangzhou Charge have kind of been in their own corner of the world for the longest time. I mean, they did win a title all the way back in 2020. This is the first time in the history of Overwatch League going up against this new look Dallas Fuel roster, defending champions of the Overwatch League, returning out of the DPS line between Edison and Spark, or Harmon, I think, most important player on this team you mentioned mcd is already as a player that's already been floating around the league he's been on a couple of different teams he's played in apac before he's played in na before alongside that a, a really under i think slept on player uh, under underestimated player in bliss i think a lot of people don't really know bliss and obviously the names here maybe a little bit wrong because mcd is on the far right hand side and next to between harmon and mcd is bliss uh, fourth from the left, second from the right. Then Bliss comes from O2 Blast. He's one of those new O2 Blast rookies. He's been floating around since the longest time. I actually remember, I don't know if you do from 2019 Gauntlet, Seth, but he played on Gen G in the 2019 Gauntlet. And I thought he looked amazing then. I, this is a guy that I remember specifically from Gauntlet as a strong Lucio player back when he was like really underage. And now that he's of age to play in the Overwatch League, I, I think he is the support prospect going into this 2023 season from all contenders. We'll have to see if it lives up all the hype that you're building for him here. As we'll go ahead and take a look at the side of the Guangzhou Charge. Plenty of familiar faces. Maybe not piggies, because man, has he had a he's had a glow up. Yeah, he certainly has. <laughs> uh, but this, it's, I think the team in general is is a huge glow up because you know when we saw the Guangzhou Charge at the start of the last season, it was pretty miserable. They didn't have a lot of wins. It was really tough going for them. And as they got through the season, they slowly shifted their roster around. Chaser One is the only returning player from, you know, the start of the 2022 season. They rebuilt the team around him as the star play, and rightly so. Chaser One, I think, is, is an incredibly talented player. In fact, I think Choi has been on Gondry Charge literally his entire Overwatch League career. He's never been on a different team. Some loyalty yep. there between both the Org and this player on the DPS on the far left here. But joining him is the rest of the squad throughout the end of the Gondry Charge's run last year. With actually the reading what they were. Uh, a very competitive team in this region with Jimmy, Piggy, Farway, and Xerneas. Uh, they just ran out of game set. They just didn't have enough games left to try and qualify for anything like a playoff. They just ran out yeah. of regular season. That they did. But now it's a fresh start here in 2023 and off the rip. If they can have a strong beginning, take down 
the defending champions, I think that they're going to be very well set to take part in, you know, those tournaments in the midseason madness, potentially in the playoffs at the end of the year. So a lot to play for here from the side of Guangzhou Sharks. But you can be damn sure that uh, Dallas Fuel, they're going to be looking to defend not only the title, but also their reputation. They're shifting mm -hmm. regions. They're coming over here into APAC and they still want to be dominant. They still want to be that team to be feared, even with some new faces. And I think you have to be very careful about sleeping on the Guangzhou Charge here. There's, there's been some, you know, murmurings around in the off season. How strong do some of these teams look? I still personally have Dallas among the upper echelon of teams in this Eastern region here. Um, and there's some good competition out there as well. There's been some healthy discussion around the Andro Spark. You know, Scrim rumors have said that both, you know, specifically Infernal have been very good, but now we just see Soul Dynasty beat Infernal. So they're being very competitive as well. I expect a lot of these teams between the six of them to be trading games as they get ready to head into the knockout stage a little bit later on in this first stage, going up against the top contenders teams as well. But um, Andro Charge is one of those super slept on teams because I think a lot of fans still remember the Guangzhou Charge from their early days in 2022 season and they kind of forget the fact that Guangzhou Charge had a huge glow up in the second half of the year and now mm -hmm. they could sort of continue that journey believing in this five-man roster they ran with in the last year but it's still gonna be a tough match for the Guangzhou Charge if you're gonna ask me I think the Dallas Fuel should be favored they're the defending champions Harbin is still a goat on the tank um and I'm not you know okay Bliss and MCD they're not quite Fielder or Chio but I think they're competitive Sure. No, I mean, no, I'm right there with you. And I mean, at the end of the day, we've already had one five map series. Why not throw another one in the mix here? If they want to kick the season off that way, then uh, I'm all for it. We'll go ahead and take a closer look, though, at the tracer zoom in here between Sparkle and Choice Wan. Sparkle's been someone that's had to really make his way through Tracer. I remember early days, it was mm -hmm. a 2021 season where his Tracer was kind of the hole in the team. It's not really specifically Sparkle because they also had Gohan that team. Essentially, they didn't have a dedicated Tracer player. So Sparkle took it upon himself to become the Tracer for the Dallas Field. And over the course of, you know, 2021, 2022, heading into 2023 now, he's really leveled up his Tracer to the point where I think this guy could really compete on Tracer. And Sparkle, you know, in many ways, reputation-wise, he was kind of the proper before proper. If we're talking about star rookies coming up from Korea, um, he was obviously, you know, in 2021 kind of existing in the year of the league, but in 2020 when he was coming in for the rookie season, that was a player we're talking about. And Sparkle's starting to re-enter the conversation a little bit more, especially after becoming champion last year. Mostly played the Reaper towards the end of the year, and I think that meta wasn't particularly fun if you're trying to pop off on the Reaper position. But Sparkle now coming fresh in 2023, gets to play a few flashier heroes like the Tracer, going up against some very known quantity Tracers like Choice Juan which we saw some great stuff out of him in the previous two years, specifically on this hero. And that we have, I mean, you're talking about, you know, 2019, some hype brewing up around him, 2020, the explosive arrival. I'm thinking all the way back to, you know, 2018, when the when the kid first debuted, and he just was so far away from being of age to play in the Overwatch League, but we had already known that Sparkle was going to get in there, he was going to start making waves, and uh, he certainly was able to do so. But I am curious to see how this does look, because Choice Wan was absolutely phenomenal by the end of the year. Like you said, that that change in performance from Guangzhou and kind of just, I'd say most of the teams that we did have uh, out here. Hi, hey, we're here. We're, there uh, we we are. do have faces, we can't get on camera. It. But uh, seeing the, the transition for a lot of the teams that were formerly near the bottom um, here in APAC last year was great because you not only had uh, Guangzhou Charge looking better, you also had like, even the Valiant looking uh, a bit better in their own right and, and putting on stronger performances, turning around, you know, the, the 2022 or 2021 year that we had seen from them where they weren't able to win anything. Um, so it was everything just kind of becoming more competitive across the board. And I'm hoping that we have that here from the outset. That's always going to be good. You don't want to have those teams that you're like, you look at them and you're like, yeah, they're just, they're always going to bottom out. They're not going to be able to get any wins. You know, we want everybody to be able to poke and prod at one another. Well, I think the, the region is still competitive, right? And when I say competitive, it means everyone can compete with everyone. There shouldn't be that many dead games, if any at all, where a team is just a complete write-off. Right. Looking at you, Shanghai, please prove everyone wrong. Please be a good team again still. We will find out in a, in a match later on today. They'll have to prove themselves versus the Hunger Spark. But last year, right, you look at the standings of the regular season, the worst performing team in East was LA Valiant, and their record was 7-17, to which is only two wins behind the Chengdu Hunters, we had a real struggle of the year yeah. at 9 and 15, which was an equal scoreline to Guangzhou Charge at 9 and 15. So, I mean, every single team, including the bottom tier LA Valiant in the Eastern region, was still competitive. Like, everyone was taking games off each other. There was no, no 0 to 24, 0 to 16 situation last year. And I expect that to be the case again this year, where, like, no one really bottoms out. Everyone still be, should still be competing against each other for wins.
Yep, that is the hope, that is the dream. But as you can notice, since we're going to be here for, uh, since we've been here on camera, I should say, for a little extended period of time, we do have a little tech issue that we have to get taken care of. So you get to listen to myself and uh, Avril for a little bit longer. But I guess in the meantime, we can go ahead and take a look at the map set. And maybe things are taken care of, maybe they're fixed. I don't know. Either way, we're going to be kicking things off on Nepal. Then we'll move into Hollywood for our hybrid map. Havana for our yeah. escort, New Queen Street for push. And then Lijiang Tower if we can go the distance and get another five map series. Yeah, it's been a year since we've seen Havana as well because we didn't get Havana in the map pool at all in the 2022 season. Last time we saw it was 2021. The game has changed significantly since then in terms of 5v5. But, uh, you know, we've got a good look at Shambali in our previous matchup. Some Antarctic Peninsula. It's all the classics, though, today. All the classic Overwatch 1 maps starting out with Nepal. Um, meta development in this region has been fairly interesting. We're actually seeing a lot more brawl compared to dive. I would have expected more dive to come on through. But I suspect a lot of the reason for that meta shift is because of that team and the light blue on the left, the Dallas feel. Everybody in this region has probably harmed been pilled. We know of how much of impact Dallas feel Rush harmed and have when they were in NA for the past two years. All these rumors about them basically setting the meta. I wouldn't be surprised with Dallas Field doing that again, but now in APAC, we'll see what Dallas are going to be playing. Currently hovering, hovering over a little bit of Doomfist. I don't know if that's what we're actually going to see. Probably not. Looking out for so a bit of Hanbin Diva, a bit of Hanbin Zarya. I heard some murmurings about Zarya maybe being played. Three, two, we'll keep one, our eyes peeled for it, but in the meantime, seems like Hanbin's going to be coming out the gate with the Doomfist. Sparkle now going back and over to the patented Genji, and this is a very different look here from the side of the Dallas field from what we've seen so yep. far. Oh, I'm been starting out with a good old sleep dart from Farley and the Guangzhou charge in the pink colors. That's the other uh, Joe team. We've got two Joe teams on the east. Hangzhou is coming up a little bit later, just teasing the colors for now. Yep. But uh, Hangzhou are going to be Guangzhou rather. See, I'm even getting confused now. Hangzhou charge going to be the ones who get first control. It's all right. We got to square it away. They're back to their staple teal blue, whatever you want to call it. As far as the <laughs> as far as the tops the are concerned, we do have quite. them rocking this far. The HUD is correct. Out. Yeah, the <laughs> HUD's correct. The end game, not so much. Either is way. Is it Leave and Shy? Are we seeing them already? Yeah, a bit of an identity crisis. If we see here for the side of the long charge, Are you going to be tagged down? The anti was out. I've been able to go in. Finally killing Blow. Jimmy going to be taken down simultaneously as well. Shots flying here. Sparkle looking to occupy the point. Blanco charged with a quick cap, but now very much in danger of losing it as they wait for these reinforcements to come back through. Zerny is now going to end up getting taken down. That's both the supports out of the fight. And the flip comes through. Dallas Fuel now in control, only giving over 11%. But Edison, as he tries to poke and prod forward, ends up yeah. getting punished. And this is kind of Sparkle also on one of his best heroes. In fact, I think this is his signature hero of all time, the Genji. Oh, yeah. Not particularly strong on this meta. But this is classic Dallas feel where Rush is going to come in, define the meta, play to the strengths of what his players can do, spark on the Genji. I don't know, maybe Harmon just isn't as confident on the win since so his version of the dive is going to end up being that Doomfist. And as you sort of mentioned, they already got that flip, they're already leading in terms of old charge, in terms of percentage points in the cap as well. Harmon um, probably forced a media strike here, actually doesn't use it. Yeah, holds on to it, has faith in the heels, they managed to pump enough out, and it's going to be the oh, Nano actually gets a what? two for one, both DPS taken down with a single rocket punch. Not something you see every day, but either way, Hanbin is absolutely farming. Xerneas eliminated by him as well. Edison finally able to get involved. We'll take down Piggy, but yeah, the Nano, the punch, that was it. Leaving Guangzhou I, charged dead on the floor. I wonder if he had that punch and powder as well, because if it's Nanoed and Empowered at the same time, that would explain the instant burst damage coming through to delete two charge members off the map. So charge, you know, they had that very early neutral fight win. You had Dallas Field kind of rolling out different areas. Harbin coming through upper area and the rest of Dallas Field going elsewhere. But aside from that, Dallas, once they get control of the point, start winning some fights. Now we get to the real spin cycle of the ultimate EMP time coming in. Harbin's waiting, just needs a little bit of HP. Okay, throws out the EMP. There's a dive in from Harbin as well. He does get slept, can be put on the ground, we'll see if they can actually finish him off, I know that Meteor Strike is still available, pops it now to get himself out of a sticky situation, the Katsune Rush in the meantime, used by MCD, drop down, not going to find any eliminations, not too much damage either, and it seems like Fuel may have to back off as the flip was grabbed here by the Guangzhou Charge, two ultimates still to work with, and yeah, wide lethal Dallas Fuel, happy to just back away. But they don't have a Nano here either. The Nano was expended earlier when we talked about Harbin getting that double kill with punch. So the Spark is just going to have to go for a dry blade here. It's just no HP. That's the problem. We don't have the Nano for the blade. You just die. Yeah, tries to go forward. Piggy able to answer back. They do lose Xerneas in the meantime, but now MCD going to be taken down. So it's some further staggers found here. They're at the hands of the Guangzhou Charge, getting themselves caught up as much as they possibly can. And Sparkle now. Well, actually, we're going to be seeing a decent flip as MCD goes over the break. Yep. Hanbin for the Winston. 
which is probably a little bit more standard, right? Doom, not particularly meta. Genji, definitely not meta. And even when you have one of the best historical Genjis in the world playing Genji, when Sparkle decides it's time to get off Genji, you know Genji ain't it for today. So they do have to rebuild a decent amount of ultimates from scratch. Although the blade had already been used. They do have a 79% lead though, but that lead is slowly being fought up by the Gwongo charge. They have Nano in Jimmy versus Harmon's Nano. Just to keep Jimmy alive, make sure he can survive the dive. He's an amount of damage out on the Xerneas as well as they try to build up towards his primal. Um, then choked out to about half HP, and Jimmy with a shot. great straight headshot. Catches Sparkle shutting down that Tracer. Choice 8 1 now, letting the pulse bomb go. They're finding too much, but they're still corralled into the side room over towards the mini pack. And MCD now going to be taken down. The pickoffs coming through as Xerneas continues to frag. Two for him on the brig. And that is going to be yep. the lead just about gained now as Charge will re grab control of the point. And I would say Charge is in a stronger position to win this round now than the Dallas Fuel are because Dallas is still waiting for their ultimates, right? They burnt a lot of ultimates in two fights ago. They've changed up their comp slightly as well. Charge have been on the comp for the entire way through. And they have far more ultimates coming online. Their timing for what the final fight's going to be is great. Rally into Primal, into Dragon Strike. When it's OT and Dragon Strike comes to the point, that's going to be big. Drop down for the quick check. Right back up onto the high ground goes Jimmy. Edison going to be taken down, and he's just 10% away from that EMP. Something that they just really need at the moment, but not to be found unless they can extend this fight a little bit further. Rally now going to be pop starting so to keep everybody alive. Hanbin using the primal range. Dude. Has to break line of sight that we see so much damage. The focus fire right now from the side of the Guangzhou charge is looking ecstatic, and they've zoned them enough to deny the touch, and that is going to be the first round going the way of Guangzhou, 185. And that's the Dragon Strike difference, right? Spark will try to come in towards the end to make the final touch. Couldn't make it in time. Dragon Strike diff in the OT is going to be good. Farway says he's got 125% sleep. I have to double check the stat line. I can see it as well if he's actually got that or not. But take a look at the early replays here again. How we got that double punch. Boom. Nano and was it? No, it wasn't even empowered. I don't think it was just some decent damage. And then bam. Yeah, choice of one already at half HP. Just sets it up for the easy finish off and then just sprays out Xerneas to sleep dart a second too late, but yep. not going to be too concerning given that they were able to win the round. You also saw, by the way, just there's a final note on that last fight. The cherry on top was Xerneas popping the rally, the brand new rally with the stun on top as well. The instant stun of the Harbin when he primals, locking Harbin in place, burning down his HP. 1,000 HP disappeared so quickly. Yeah, he was very much in danger. Hanbin, though, out the rip, goes for the win center. This time, the dive is looking quite good. They do find Jimmy, but it's going to be the cost of Bliss. Running in as well. Ends up getting picked off. Piggy, good to come away with that one. And it's going to be the second support now, joining him in the grave as MCD will also fall. Choice one down to a sliver. Pops a recall, manages to stay alive. This means that Guangzhou Charge is going to be in a nice position to go ahead and get the initial cap. It's five minute trade. MCD now going over towards Anna. A little bit more comfortable for MCD. As it be the first cap again for the Guangzhou Charge, but the time around, I think the Guangzhou Charge are in a far stronger position after the first fight than they were. They're looking over towards Village. Despite it needing to be eventually a comeback for the Guangzhou Charge, they got that first round underway. Piggy in a little bit of trouble here, but as long as Piggy stays alive, that's converted to huge ult charge from far away. Look at the difference. Yeah. MCD only recently swapped Anna. He's ages behind. That he is. Mano being built up, and it seems like they have a good sense of this, which is why they're trying to dive in and take far away out of the fight, but they're not able to do so. Instead, it's going to be Hanbin traded out. Choice A1 getting the better of that exchange. They've gone up, and oh, what a crisp headshot from Jimmy. Edison just desperately trying to farm to get this basically first EMP of the game online, and he's not able to do so. And now Bliss taken down. MCD continues to be under fire. He's picking quite deep into the back lines, and when it's really just Hanbin against him, he's not under that much threat of dying. Oh, back down. Oh, I was even gonna get popped. He's going for the offensive here. Juggles Hanbin into the corner. Hanbin having an ult of his own. So Piggy kind of using this in mild desperation, but either way will survive. And <sighs> Longjo charges, they surpass 50%. Look, I think it's important for Piggy to live there because if he dies, you're at risk of losing the point. You're 4v5. But yeah. However, it's an expensive way to survive. Jimmy will instantly get the kill, though. Things start to feel much better after that. Um, no, absolutely do. I mean, Jimmy with these headshots onto Edison's just time and time again manages to find him twice in a row now here on this map. And it seems like Longjo Charge might just be able to run away with this one. By the way, the Dragon Strike, Neon ha Online, they also have the Pulse. Hanbin was slept during that fight. So that he had no impact on the fight at all. Couldn't Primal, couldn't do anything. His team was getting picked apart. We talk about Jimmy consistently getting those headshots. Starting to see why Hanzo is becoming a favorite pick. We don't really see this sort of Hanzo dive in NA, but in APAC, we've seen now three teams between Charge and the both Soul teams playing a lot of this Hanzo alongside the Tracers and Jimmy. Once again, 
getting that uh, dragon strike online as we hit the ot the most important time to dragon strike and this is time just eating up edison not wanting to come out of stealth to try to farm up the rest of the emp was just waiting for it to tick up now we go into ot to see if they can win out the fight choice they want the false bomb still going to be held the emp does go across they managed to find piggy isolating the winston taking him down the cleave coming in from hanbin looking decent gets a good juggle on discerning for the healing comes back through they managed to keep him alive at least for the time being out across on everybody here on the side of the guard to charge and spark will finally be able to put one of these cps players down follows up for the break yeah. jimmy gonna be taken out as well finally the dallas will have somewhat of a foothold we'll see we'll see if they can do what the dynasty did ever so well in that last series and hold this all the way to 100. that by the way i believe was edison's second emp so far this series so he had one on village and this is his second emp total across our two rounds it's been rough going for steady eddie so far in his opening match of the 2023 season but the solo EMP on the piggy, I gotta say, was worth it. You get an instant tank advantage. Harmon gets a prime wall as well. That yep. secures the fight. As Sparkle will miss that false bomb. A little bit wide. Special choice they want. They do get out back and forth here. But inevitably, Sparkle has to concede the high ground. Jump back in from Hanbin. They're gonna go ahead and use this beat aggressively. Jumping all on top of the members of the Guangzhou charge. They are rewarded with a singular kill so far. Jimmy gonna be taken out of the fight. He's gonna be nano to try to survive. And so far, it's working a treat. 10% away from that next primal raid. Drops back down, lands in over towards Hanbin. A little bit of extra damage here for him, but launch a charge. So they are starting to posture forward, give themselves back over towards the point to try to contest. But Sparkle comes in from behind, and Piggy just gets absolutely evaporated. I think Piggy expected to get the ult charge a little bit faster. He dies on 99%, so he could have primal there. If he stayed alive for about half a second longer, it should be the cleanup now for Dallas Feel and Launcher Charge gonna reset quickly. It's gonna go double 99s for sure. Look, if Piggy actually lives it with a primal, I think that's super winnable for the charge. But just a minor difference in ult charge percentage. Damage wasn't quite there. Maybe he didn't hold down the Q key. The other important factor here to mention is Edison does in fact have another EMP. So this one is going to be the potential to lock down the round if he can pull this off. Rally goes out first here from Cernius. Jimmy under fire. He big comes one. across, manages to find three, and that's going to be a pulse bomb in from Sparkle, catching up the choice A1. Let's it loose, finds that enemy Hanzo. Take it out. Just to go ahead and deal with this tank, Piggy and Hanbin. Both primals rolling, just trying to stay alive. Pulse bomb from choice A1 hey. finds MCD. Healing going to be cut down now. It's just Bliss alone here for the side of the Dallas Fuel, trying to keep everybody alive. Jumps back in to keep things contested. The flip, however, he's there. The Dallas Fuel, rather, are still in control. Hanbin now going to be taken down. Zernius desperately trying to stay alive. His choice A1 dashes around the flanks, trying to find Bliss. Takes him low, finally finishes him with a melee hit charge. Get the flip. Last second contest does come through. Edison giving his life to try to along it as much as possible. But now it's just Sparkle playing forward. He can't Man. get anything done. And the Guangzhou Charge are going to be able to take our first map with a 2 0 win. My goodness, the Guangzhou Charge doubters are off to a bad start for the 2023 season. One map in, and they got a 2 0 lead in terms of, well, just the pull, a 1 0 lead in the series, but a 2 0 finish on the pull versus the defending champions of the Dallas Fuel. This is why you cannot sleep on the Guangzhou charge. If you just think this team is the same charge with Rio and etc on it from the start of the 2022 season, you've got the wrong team in your mind. This different yeah. Guangzhou charge coming to 2023 is looking powerful. They're looking powered up. I'm impressed by Picky and Harbor. Look, we've got two off tank plays, traditionally off tank players playing on now main tank roles like the Winston, making it look good. Piggy, especially some of the Winston mechanics we saw in there, pretty decent. Good juggles, yeah. good decision making, a little bit aggressive on one of the plays where he was forced to primal, but aside from that, yeah, let that one go for the 2023 season so far, map number one and all that. But otherwise, not bad from Piggy on that Winston. Yeah, not bad at all. And uh, just incredibly strong start here. Jimmy with some great headshots as well, just consistently shutting down Edison, but playing those EMP builds, something that they very crucially needed in you know every single fight. Uh, just wasn't able to build him up fast enough because of those initial couple headshots coming through, really pushing that Samba behind, making sure that he was delayed compared to everybody else uh, in the lobby with the DPS play. So really solid stuff here from the side of the Guangzhou charge. The question is, can they maintain it as we get ready to go into our second map? This is just going to be that King of the Hill flash in the pan or will it carry over? We'll find out when we come back. And here we go. Always good to see the Marine cast in some Overwatch League. But uh, it's us. We This is the English broadcast, so hello. Uh, we're back, and we're just one map into our second series here in APAC. Guangzhou Charge, the doubters getting silenced here in our first after our first map. Nepal very much going their way with a 2-0 victory over the defending champions in the Dallas Fuel. And while well, it was a, a bit close, we got some of those rounds down to the wire, some decent starts yep. for Fuel, uh, especially on Village. Guangzhou, it kind of felt like they kind of always had those rounds in hand. 
well, it's a lot of the pressure coming through from the Jimmy Hanzo, who was a standout uh, in that in Nepal map across both both of the rounds. I got to say, the opening picks was immaculate. Having the timings of the Dragon Strike and the OTs as well is always important. I think Piggy is still, uh, to me, just so important on that Winston. Like, I don't expect sometimes for these traditionally off tank players to be to pick up Winston so effectively, but you know that was looking prime. It was looking he was looking super comfortable on that Winston. Dare I say more comfortable than Hanbin? And maybe that was why we saw Hanbin roll out on the Doomfist on our opening round of Village, and perhaps. Mm -hmm. Um, the Doom Genji look coming through from Dallas Field ended up being a mistake. In fact, I'll, I'll probably say that it was a mistake given the fact that they did end, up did end up changing competitions and it's not really meta. I mean, Doom Genji, not meta on either NA or APAC as far as I'm aware. I haven't really seen any teams get success with that. Teams don't usually scrim that either. So mm -hmm. to kind of pull out a wild card super early on, that was a risk by Rush and it did not pay off. No, not in the long term. I mean, initially it was looking quite strong, but like you said, just wasn't able to find value. The dry blade had to be used there. Um, and in the end, just had to get swapped off. And then it was just far too late. Too many swaps, couldn't catch up on ultimates. Squonk's recharge completely had the pace and the control. And they did not let it go. So a really strong showing from them. Again, curious to see how they carry that forward as we do get ready to go into our next map, which I believe is Hollywood. My, my you know, I think my so, yeah. Hollywood and Havana. And then I yes. can't remember the rest, but... Uh, you know, uh, we'll New see. Queen Street and then Lijiang Tower, I believe. I was going to say if we get there, but I think we should get there because, uh, you know, you, you cannot underestimate the Dallas Field, even though, yeah. uh, Custer, I know in the preseason you certainly have been. I'd like the Dallas Field to see if they can maybe prove you wrong on that one, but they would need to be able to make this comeback Always happen now on here. Hollywood. And I got to, you know, we're going to see any sniper on, sniping on Hollywood. I don't... I, I want to use NA as the example in terms of meta, but I feel like APAC has shifted in terms of what their understanding of the meta is, that it might not be super accurate. We've seen some Sombra Reaper stuff coming through there, um, a little bit more dive heavy, some some D.Va. I'm actually surprised that neither Piggy or Harbin have been playing the D.Va just yet. I still think D.Va is a super strong pick as far as tanks goes. D.Va and Winston are probably the two strongest tanks at the moment. Ram could see some play if we want to get into some Brawl type metas. Mm -hmm. which I'm actually surprised that Dallas haven't forced yet because you'd imagine that Dallas, given their history, would be the brawl favored team. So a little bit of that Hanbin Ram should potentially come through in one of these maps coming up. I mean, time will tell as to whether or not we're going to be able to see that. I mean, obviously, guys, uh, you know, again, a little minor delay. As you could tell, uh, some things were off. We're fixing it. Don't worry. We know that the audio and the video might be a little bit desynced at the moment. The skins weren't the same. But opening day, we're getting it fixed. Bear with us for just a couple more minutes and then hopefully things will all be good and then we can carry on our merry way. Uh, if you've ever worked in live production before, you know that this is a thing that is often expected to happen when you go ahead and you kick off a brand new season. And if you don't know that, now you do. And if you still want to complain about it, don't. Just, just shut <laughs> up. It doesn't, it doesn't help anything. Uh, but <laughs> we I'm all just want to get back into the games email. here at the end of it all. But yeah, uh, screaming into the ether that is, you know, the chat and whatnot is not going to assist in getting things sped up and you're not going to unveil some issue that we haven't previously or already known about. So I uh, appreciate it, but it, it's unnecessary. Anyway, we'll get ready to go into this one and we'll see what, uh, you know, if, if the fuel are going to be able to answer back. I'm right there with you. I think that, you know, if you're going to come into the series as Guang for Charge, you can feel very good about the uh, the dominance that was shown there on that first map, but you can't get complacent. You definitely can't start feeling yeah. overly comfortable because that's when you're going to get caught. That's when they go ahead, they sneak up behind you, right, they take a map away from you, and suddenly the series it's, it's is your, out of your It's your hands. time to shine. Tell me, tell me, come on, put that put the Korean uh, oh, lessons uh, to work. It's your time to shine. Um, something about wanting to watch, see Tracer, something else. Uh, oh God, I don't know. I'm not. I'm not prepped for this. I'm no. I'm not. I'm no wolf when it comes down to my live translations of uh, fan signs. You lived in Korea for about twenty years now, mate. You gotta. You gotta show me. Yes, twenty years <laughs> since I was ten years old. I yeah. have lived in Korea. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Dude. I mean, if that was I'm the case, sure and I still didn't Korea, speak dude. it well, I'm pretty sure then you know it would be bad. It would Korean be... foster parents. You. You know, you've been there your whole life. Come on, what's what's holding you back? Uh, my Wolf, pick, Wolf picked up the whole Korean language in two months. What's going on? It's true. My it's, it's been my it's been my laziness is basically the the crux of it all. But uh, I, I mean, it's I heard by the way, but the audience so at home that don't know, this is uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna leak something right now. Seth oh said boy. that he was gonna do the live translation of the Korean interviews later. 
So oh, yeah. You know, when we get there, you know, it's, again, we'll, we'll put those Korean <laughs> lessons to work. Yep, that's going to be, it's going to be a very bad time if I tried to do that. That would not go well <laughs> over uh, whatsoever. I would probably, in fact, end up insulting people because of how poorly translate, uh, how poor my translations would be. Um, so we're not going to attempt that. We're not going to even remotely consider the idea. So I like the, the, I like the cat on the phones more than I like the sign. You know what I like? And the banner on the bottom left, uh, if the cameraman could pan slight, oh yeah, here we are. Just the, the person can put it here. The repeating soul careers across the entire card really does it for me <laughs> in fact you probably all know by now you're i'm sure you're all aware that the mid-season madness uh the location has been announced gonna be at the kintex yeah. the Ex exhibition center arena or something like that uh which is going to be hosted in soul korea 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 soul mm -hmm. korea soul korea perfect that country I could have actually translated that one sign. It was a, a fan sign for the, the casters, say fighting for uh, Chang Sik and uh, the Marine and whatnot. And then mm -hmm. somebody had said, I love you. So I'm assuming it's one of the players. That one I couldn't quite catch. I, unfortunately, I don't know all of the players' names by heart, uh, but here we go. It seems like things are now moving forward. We can progress onward in this series as we get ready to go into Hollywood for our hybrid. This is where we will see if we're going to get any Ash gameplay, some Widow gameplay. Edison will be tested. We know Jimmy's super favorable on those types of heroes. Just looking back on some Hollywood gameplay from NA that happened earlier in the day for that. Uh, LA Gladiators versus the Houston Outlaws. It was predominantly Winston, Tracer, a little bit of Sombra Dive in there. Some Brigana stuff, a little bit of Kariko as well. Um, so it could be a multitude of those types of heroes coming through. Or, you know, maybe the, the meta here is just, again, completely different. It's opposite world, right? So we could be seeing some Brawl. I am still expecting some Dallas Fuel Brawl at some stage. Come on, it's Russia's specialty. You've even got, like, the best rookie Lucio coming out of Korea. Like, I, I seriously think Bliss is... Like, he has the potential to be the second Chio if he has a good year this year under Russia's tutelage. But they got to get it right so far opening map on Nepal still some things need to be adjusted all right well everyone is ready so we can go ahead and jump into the action now to get into our nice nighttime Hollywood I, you cannot see that many you can't see any stars in the sky actually in Hollywood this is actually heavy false advertisement from Blizzard there's so much light pollution that see you the can't world see a damn what thing. it could be Seth King that could be a world you know, where Holly, Hollywood doesn't have light pollution. <laughs> I guess with all of the, the hovering electric vehicles and whatnot, we've gotten rid of some of that, that smog oh, yeah. and whatnot. Uh, maybe that helps clear up the night sky. But for now, I'm calling this, this some nonsense. So there we go. I don't know if you just saw the Xerneas uh, swap yeah. the Life Weaver for all of three seconds. So official Life Weaver gameplay in the Oblige League. Tick that one off. The bingo card. I don't think it's on there. Yeah, done. How do you feel? You finally got the car's Life Weaver. Yeah, you it's know, time. it feels good to, to, to continue to just get first here. I was one of the first ones to ever co commentate Wrecking Ball. Now we've got uh, first life weaver. Anyway, Dallas Fuel going to be cleaning up a couple players here. Jimmy, of course, does manage to find Edison. This time not quite as impactful, given that it's going to be not going to be delaying a Sombra, but still does come away with that kill with Wiley. The fight going to be won here for the side of the Dallas Fuel initially, as we do get Han yeah. back over onto the Zarya, which is always great to see. And that's kind of what I was looking forward to, right? I, I figured at some stage during this series, Harmon was going to bring up the Zarya because we'd heard murmurings with, from the Scrimbuck Stock Exchange that Zarya has been played. And if Zarya's going to play, you know, Harm is at the forefront of that. We'll have to see what he can bring to the table. So far, one fight in, looking good for the Dallas Fuel. Nano is being led by far away, though, so Gwangjo Charge should have that ultimate first. Nade going to be lobbed in, disconnect over onto Bliss. He's just going to be making his exit, but as he tries to, Choice one hounds him down the melee. Hit goes ahead and finishes him off. Point now going to be opened up here for the side of the Guangzhou charge, but Sparkle looks to answer back. Finds Piggy, but it's going to be an exchange on the tanks at the end of the day. And Guangzhou charge will continue to trade up. Sparkle's doing his damnedest, builds up this pulse bomb, but then it's going to be slept in the stairwell. Cut down to size. The Guangzhou charge can go ahead and occupy this point so far. It's just MCD still hovering nearby. Bliss now it's, it's rejoining him. What oh. the dive in? It's so Not swift. Anymore. And Choice A1 comes away with it. That was a huge set coming from Troy because if that stick doesn't happen, the kill doesn't happen. Dallas Fuel get a great retake. They're going to go for it anyway, but it's a 4v5. This might be for Folly. They're trying for it. Piggy going to be taking low. Dragon Strike to be invested through the wall, trying to find some damage, trying to find some kills. Edison with a headshot will take down far away. Edison, though, as he climbs up onto the high ground, ends up falling to Piggy's hand. Jimmy going to be taking down the over, so that's still going to be now evened out as I'm trying to cover this one, but Bliss is going to be eliminated as well. 
3v3 at the end of it all. MCD also going to get picked off. Cernius again, the bloodthirsty support comes over yet another frag. The sleep, the anti, the kill. Hanbin's dead. The point is capped. And Gallus Fuel now have to try to stave off Bongjo charges to begin the push. Hanbin might swap again, might go back over towards Zarya. Could be Diva here because Diva. we are on to B. You need some of that high ground, low ground play. But it does mean he deletes his ultimate twice. He deleted his Zarya grab yeah. ultimate. It deletes his media um, strike ultimate. Oh. He's going to be down. Speaking of being down, Edison going down nice and early. Two man Bionet, a Guangzhou charge. Getting nice and aggressive here. As they speed their way through B. And I'm pretty sure that might have been a C9 on A as well, considering it was a 3v3. But no one from Dallas Field could have held on to the point. And if they did, MCD could have ulted and they could have held. Either way, MCD going to be holding that all for a little bit longer. Choice A1 with the second pulse bomb of the game. Goes in, finds the stick on Edison this time around. Comes up with the kill. The man advantage very much there for the side of the Guangzhou Church, especially as Bliss falls. Sparkle will be joining them as well. So much space occupied. And they just left one person sat back on the cart this entire time, Apple. They've just been playing right outside of the spawns. Dude, the, the tempo coming through from the Guangzhou Charge is incredible. I mean, if you turn the nameplates off, you didn't have the HUD there. I would have thought the Guangzhou Charge are actually the Dallas Fuel right now in terms of pure pacing and speed of this team going through. And Piggy's got the salt on board as well. He's going to be able to really do some work with this uh, primal. Time you know. comes. Finally invested here from MCD, but it's just going to be met with and shut down by a sleep guard here. Hanbin going to be woken up, does get antsy. They're looking to break him out of the mech. Well, are able to do so. Self-destruct going to have to be used just to try to get himself back through. No kills to be found, but at least we'll be able to safely remix so he's back into the fight here. Along with the rest of his teammates. Oh, the nano, the body block. Piggy goes in, rips apart Bliss, and now he's looking for MCD. There's no way for him to receive any healing. It's an easy setup kill from here from far away. They clean it up. Hanbin again take it out. The baby diva killed off. And that is just going to be a delayed team kill and the cap on B. Four minutes strong going into the final stress here of Hollywood. It's it's a different Guangzhou charge. I mean, you got to wake up if you oh, think yeah. this is 2022. 2022 was a whole year ago. This new Guangzhou charge, which is actually still the same team from the end of 22. They're just on fire. They're, they're playing so well. The pacing's right. The mechanics are on fire as well. Piggy's Winston, the body block of the Bliss. Everything is just landing on exactly where they want it to. Speaking of landing stuff, far away with his nades has been pretty immaculate as well. A great position in the last fight, held the high ground. As Piggy goes back to Zarya now, the D.Va, good for B, preferring the Zarya for C, but it's just gone dead. Yeah, Piggy just finds him, on the swap, instantly shut down, and I mean, just building up any kind of ults here, aside from the single self-destruct that he saw. It just looks like it's proving to be incredibly difficult, if not impossible for him. Longshot charge, still three alts in the back pocket here. Dallas Fuel scrambling to try to get this pulse bomb online from Sparkle. And even then, they needed to find value if they want to slow the pace. Jimmy going to be anti out, goes down low. A little bit of extra damage over towards him. But right as he gets down to single digit HP, oh he God. manages to survive. And then he follows up the storm arrows across. Sparkle's going to be taken down. That's the pulse now eliminated. Both DPS going to be taken out as Jimmy finds his second. Bliss, MCD, everybody you could possibly name effectively getting wiped off the face of the map with two minutes and 44 seconds remaining. Guangzhou Charge will storm their way to the end of Hollywood. This is utter dominance being shown right yeah, now by Guangzhou. This is incredible. Everyone's power rank is in shambles right now because the Guangzhou Charge, you got you to put this team up like 10 rankings at the moment. Smile and Xerneas is facing the camera there towards the end there as well. Well deserved. I mean, they know they're in charge and they know they're ones in the lead possibly they can just they can just believe that the better team because they're showing that they are as we head back over towards the first fight again and you know this is where i think the team coming through from the side of the dallas field is maybe a little bit split sparkle had a couple of decent moments there i remember harm and zarya being towards that middle section with the with the stairs going up and the rest of the team being pushed away in the cafe and that's what split the team up originally then of course the choice one pulse bomb stick on the mcd just cemented the 5v4 but it's the pace in the Guangzhou charge that's been the most impressive you look at the way they move through B yep. the, the way they're able to push so far up take those fights out mechanics of the Dallas fuel plays put far away into incredible positions to land these bio nades Jimmy's picks on this Hanzo continues to just be dominant I mean the two kills straight up in the final fight for C that is all you really need and, and Hanbin's in so much trouble you see from his positioning as well he has to burn both doubles under huge pressure from choice they won piggy is just on top of them the entire way through and there's just no shot for the dallas field to get any trace i don't think dallas field got a single kill in that final fight on c not that i can recall i think they all just kind of got swept under the rug the closest they got was taking down jimmy but then he was able to survive and instantly replied with two eliminations of his own but now we'll see how the fuel fare on their attack is going to be hunting out the gate back over here onto the winston 
Edison having to pull back away from the security room. Not wanting to die early yet again. We're officially fully mirrored here in terms of both teams playing the exact same thing. And Edison's really got to be able to keep up with Jimmy here because Jimmy has been playing at the spare front of getting those opening picks that have put the Guangzhou charge ahead. Speaking of being ahead, this time MCD, the attacking side is going to be slightly ahead of the nanos, but we talk about picks, we talk about Jimmy. It's him once again. Yep, and he's going to get oh Hanman as well. Mid lead falls with a headshot on MCD. Jimmy is unleashed. He is uncontainable. There's nothing it would seem the Dallas can do to try to shut this guy down. So to say one will steal away the kill. But Jimmy is just firing on all cylinders. Jimmy is simply incapable of not right now. It's it's unreal gameplay coming through from the Guangzhou charge. Just everybody hitting their shots. Being in perfect positions so just peeling for one another. I mean, it's just fantastic to see. Guangzhou charge fans, something to very much be excited about. Granted, it is just the opening series, but going up against the four, the, the reigning champions, this has got to be a damn good feeling for you. False bomb this time, not going to find the connection. MCD manages to survive, lives another day, but they want to still hovering around this back line. You can see Bliss doing his damage to try to fuel for him. The rest of the team now getting split away from their supports. Punishes not being found though. False bomb out from Sparkle as well, going to go wide. No kill to be found. He's going to be anti up for the moment. they want down to a sliver of HP. For now, he will be able to stay alive. Nano's out. Han been desperately trying to get this kill here on a far away. Sleeper gonna go wide. He stays alive for a little bit longer. Now the primal gonna get popped. They're juggling far away, away from the rest of the squad. They got him into the corner, but the kill's just not being found. Off screen, Edison will be able to find Jimmy. Han been now. Han been dies. Yeah, a tank for a DPS. I think you take that one any day of the week here for the Guangzhou charge. But can the support survive the anti? The answer is gonna be no. Sparkle and Bliss finally managed to get on top of far away. Zernius to take them down. But this should be the moment the Dallas crew are able to break through and start capping this point. And for all the praise onto Jimmy, it was Edison that takes Jimmy down. I think that was the most important kill coming in for the Dallas Fuel. It took so long for them to take far away. It was Hanbin basically in a 1v1, even primals for it. And the fight's actually not even over just yet because that Dragon Strike sweeps on through. It's not going to give Charge too much to work through though because Piggy dies one for one. He does die now. Xerneas is going to be taken out as well. So it's just the DPS and far away trying to elongate this. But with Choice A1 getting taken out, that should be all of the delay tactic taken away from charge so yeah cap does come in the last second parting sleep dart there from far away as he gives his life over it's still three and a half minutes here from the side of dallas fuel but they need to have a very swift v take if they want to have any hope of coming close to charge's time exactly 244 is very impressive coming through for a full completion the dallas fuel they're known for their tempo they're known for their pace they'll need to show that again as the 2022 version of the Dallas Fuel, you would have no qualms about it. No second thoughts about their ability to speed things up. Bonto Charge, though, already taking some high ground. So it's going to be high ground versus high ground. Not going to be the same situation where Dallas Fuel essentially gets spawn camped. And even the extra Bionade coming through is just going to force Harbin back. That's been Sparkle left to cart duties here, so... They don't have that tracer, they don't have that damage output matching here on the high ground. And Piggy, okay, it's just going to be a trade of these nanos to the Winston's come diving in. Far away, able to stay alive at least for a little bit longer here. The sleep does go across, Piggy. Back into it. Primal still held by both. Bliss down to a sliver. Hanman going to be taken out the headshot from Jimmy. Then Eisen being able to use the ultimate. Now Piggy is unleashed. Into the back line, sets up for the kill on the MCD, and that is just going to be the clean sweep with Jimmy finding three of these eliminations. Was it three or four? Because I lost count there. I think that looked like four to me, but it might have been three. In either case, it was a huge quantity. He's currently the kill leader, the final blow leader of the entire lobby, sitting at 13. Second place there is going to be choice one at nine. So it really goes to show. And uh, not a single player from Dallas Field is, is close enough. It's Sparkle on six. For in case you were wondering who is the highest of the Dallas Fuel. So, yeah, Jimmy is really doing something quite special here as Dragon Strike. Just Go through. Flushing them all back. Okay, Piggy overextending a bit, though. Does end up dying. Choice A1 trying to get a timing pulse bomb around the corner. Ends up going a bit wide. A little bit whiffy, and that does give them plenty of wiggle room to get themselves back over the car, but still moving it, proving to be a very arduous task here for the side of the fuel. Big nade, the huge. High ground. Big nade, yeah, takes out three down to low HP. They'll be able to stabilize it by a little bit of extra time, but then Edison pushing his way through the saloon. Comes up with a shot far away, going to be taken down, delaying that next nano to come through. It's MCD, a little window of opportunity to work with. To try to outpace. Oh bomb goes in. Sparkle going to find Xerneas. Jimmy going to be taken down by the shield bash as well. Now Piggy falling. It should be Dallas Field getting themselves damn close to the finish line. There might still be one more fight coming on through, but that was super well played by the Dallas Field. They're not going to find any staggered kills here. Not quite far away. The first one's spawning through. The first one dead at the hands of Edison. 
the dragon strike coming on through flushing members of the charge out a huge bio nade forcing to the ground and edison threading the needle to find that shot to far away that sets up the five versus four as mentioned here comes that next fight now big sleep out of the piggy connected can't tell either way Nano, widely nullified. Piggy still getting chunked out. Hanman is still playing well back over towards the spawner room here, just trying to get rid of Jimmy or at least just hold the attention here into the back line. Sparkle eventually joins him, does find the elimination. It's going to be a trade back here as two members go down on either side. The support's still alive for the moment here on the side of the charge. Zernius ends up falling. Hanman with the primal, finding one. Far away getting juggled around. Hanman cleans him up. The cart locked in position though. Choice A1 looks to hold this. Dash is back in, knows that this primal is going to be expiring. Hanbin has to go back up onto the high ground. 25 seconds remaining. Just three meters left to go. Guangzhou charge. Can they hold this out? Piggy nearly has his own primal. Well, choice of one's not going to win the 1v2, but he can certainly stay alive because he knows he can't die. They have the respawn advantage. Guangzhou charge is the far closer respawns there. Time is a huge factor. We're already into last fight. Even if Dallas feel cap, they're not going to have enough time to get the same 244. They might not even finish the entire map here. It all rests down to this now, and it's going to be a pulse bomb and maybe a dragon strike for medicine. Just said one going low, has to wait for the elevator yet again if he wants to keep Diggy, no problem. Grab Diggy's gonna be taken down. Hamid just jumps forward, stomps on him, and that's him taken out. Zernius now falling as well, far away, under fire. Continues to go lower and lower. Sparkle eventually able to find the kill, and Peggy not being able to pop that primal rage might have just cost him the hold on B. I think so. I, I, I really bet on it because Peggy had the opportunity to put the primal in there. There's no somber in play. He wasn't stunned or hacked or slept or anything. He was perfectly in position to do it, but just misjudged the amount of damage coming through from the field, and that will. And the Guangzhou charge will not hold B. That was Phil. Earned themselves a little bit more borrowed time to push through C, but as mentioned, even if they can't be, the time isn't there. It has to be a perfect push through from Dallas all the way through, all the way to the end. If, if they don't get this flawlessly, I don't think they finish the map. Yeah. They need it with time. Already at 45 seconds. Not going to be a great feeling for them, but at least getting to the end would be a breath of relief and a hope. We're able to draw things out. Hamid going to be taking down a half HP. Anti does connect onto him, but grabs the Mega Pack once it expires. But I mean, Xerneas is just getting up in their faces right now. The whip is flying. He's dealing a bunch of damage. Edison with a headshot, though. Does take out Choice A1. It's going to be a lot of pressure fueled off here from the side of the Dallas Fuel. Looks like Wangzhou widely wants to try to back off as much as they possibly can. But the deep pursuit is coming in. Hanbin gets in on top of Farway. Zuri is going to be taken down. This is going to be a good amount of space now opened up for Dallas Fuel. A really strong opportunity here. Dallas Fuel have three ultimates coming online. The you know, the Dragon Strike over towards the OT, but the Primal Rage as well, and the extra kill on the Jimmy is massive. This is the opportunity that Dallas Fuel have been waiting for. They can cap off the back of these three ultimates. Yeah, but it's not going to be the time. Obviously, the OT rolling through, but the cap now is going to be the goal. Choice A1, 4% away from that next pulse. Corner checking, trying to see if there's anybody lurking around the outskirts here of the fight. Piggy going to be broken out of the mech, instantly dealt with. Choice A1 lets the pulse bomb go. Doesn't find anything. Jimmy, however, swapping over onto the cast, and he's going to be good for one, but then it's traded back. Edison finding that elimination. Hanbin cleaves down far away once again, and they will be able to make it to the end of the map. So we have extra innings now coming up. At least but, one extra inning to see how Guangzhou Charge does with this 244 time bank. It's got to be a draw only scenario. The yeah. cap with zero time. It's OT, charge of 244, which means Charge can win this map. Dallas can only draw. They must hold a one tick for two minutes and 44. Guangzhou Charge cap that. They get the map entirely. So take a look at Jimmy once again. I think this might have been the early 3k. Brilliant opening shot to Sparkle. It's the aerial flick now onto Harbin. And then I think the third shot here was one that really sold it for me. Yeah, yeah that's just beautiful stuff. Straight onto MCD. You can nearly see a really strong comp coming through from Dallas Fuel. I'm not surprised they're going back over towards the Zari. If you're looking for something that can just be steadfast and hold its ground, dig its heels in for only in A defense, because that's all they got to work through. Maybe the Zarya comp is what you're looking towards. But it has to be extremely flawless. And even then, only a draw, Kilios. Definitely not ideal conditions here for the fuel, but stopping charge from getting up to match point would still feel like a slight little victory in and of itself. The Guangzhou charge, they'd probably feel like it would be delaying the inevitable, because they very much have to feel like they are in firm control. 2.44, the time to stave them off. Jimmy going to be looking for the opening pot shot. Let's get a dink onto Hanbin. But otherwise, no further punish, and he'll go straight back over onto the Hanzo. And no shenanigans out of Guangzhou Charge. They don't need him. They're confident that the base composition will work for them as it has done in the past so far. And A was fairly contentious, so it wasn't a extremely clean A take for the Guangzhou Charge in regulation time. 
again they were able to split harbin up from the rest of the team and that was primarily how they were able to find that back line get those picks necessary to clean up eight yeah i'm thinking around two minutes to be able to get that a cap so see how they fare this time around Dink goes across that one's on a hanbin shot just that need. to be woven through and edison instantly taken down the immortality field dealt with by the way, the only world member right now on the side of the ball is going to charge Sarnia's doing his damage to try to keep that on alive and in the fight while Piggy plays the front line but goes down to 58. Drops the bubble and Jimmy is here to continue to peel. Choice they want as well getting involved. That's the support now gone. The tank broken it. down. Sparkle. This is just not a damn thing he's going to be able to do. The recall already burned. He's not even popped up the full HP. So the cap will come through with relative ease and the Guangzhou charge will take this with a 2-0 lead now moving up to match point. This is dire straits for the Dallas field. Like you did not expect the defending champions would have come in 0-2 down. Now force a reverse sweep against the Guangzhou charge. Just about every person's preseason power rankings had Dallas field at the top of APAC. Guangzhou charge at the bottom of APAC. You better just flip that whole damn thing 180 right now because the Guangzhou charge being this good, this dominant, looking this clean, that wasn't on anyone's bingo cards. They might 3-0 the series. And that's a wild statement to make, but it's the world we're living in. That it is. And what a world to be a part of. I mean, Piggy just looking like he's lounging, smile on his face. Life's been good for him as a plane, and it's looking like it's he, getting even better. He took the training weights off. Yeah, that's all it was. I mean, man, what a performance so far here from the Guangzhou Charge. As you said, Dallas Fuel now needing to reverse sweep in their opening series here. The first week of APAC 2023. This is certainly one that we, none of us had anticipated. A brutal, a brutal realization here for the side of the fuel. But we'll see if they can rally back. You know, if there is a team that you would expect could be able to do it, could pull off a reverse sweep, it's of course going to be a championship winning one. Granted, there's some new faces here, but that core is widely the same. But I don't know if it's going to be possible, ever. There's some magic left for Rush to be able to accomplish. If he really is a magician, now will be the time to prove it. I wonder how many spell slots he's got left to burn through because he's going to need them all. No one expected the Guangzhou Charge to be this good right out the gate. The Dallas Fuel finding out the hard way. We were questioning the Hanzo meta, but right now with Jimmy in the lobby, I'm more than happy to keep watching this because it's just been highlight after highlight from this guy. And the onus is very much on the Fuel to try to step up and be able to match him in that regard. We'll see if they're going to be able to do it, though. If we have potentially one final map to be played out, Havana could be the staging ground here for Guangzhou Charge 3-0 beginning to the season. We'll find out when we come back to the break. Well, this is certainly not where we expected to be, but Guangzhou Charge find themselves with a 2-0 lead now here in their opening series versus the reigning defending champions of the Dallas Fuel. And they have looked unfalterable here, uh, infallible. <laughs> Avril, I just don't know uh, if Fuel are going to be able to rally back. Like I said, if you could expect a team to be able to do it, to pull off a reverse sweep, it would be a, a defending champion. But given what we've seen right now from the side of the Guangzhou Charge, I just don't know if it's actually possible. It's just night and day, the difference between this version of the Guangzhou Charge and the one we got at the start of last year. And yeah. maybe this is... I don't want to speak too early because you, you never really want to, you know, make these kind of preds happen, but... My hands are clasped. I mean, what what a, a year it could be potentially for the Guangzhou Charge to have their glow up season after winning their only title, which by the way is a huge feat because most teams, a lot of teams haven't won a single title. Yep. The Guangzhou Charge, they peaked in 2020. It's taken them damn near three years to try and reach those peaks again. And this might just be the year if they can continue this performance. They haven't even won yet, by the way. So again, don't want to celebrate too soon. Don't want to compliment them too early, just in case maybe, possibly, Rush and the defending championship squad could bring back this reverse sweep, but it's not looking good for the Dallas Fuel today. First match of the season for them. First match for them in a new region as well. First time Dallas Fuel's been in APAC, been in the Eastern region, and it's a 0-2 start. Yeah, and I mean, we'll go ahead and zoom in, not on the DPS lineup, which you might have expected, but on the supports here, because Farway's been having a whale of a time playing the Ana. I think Farway's nades have been so clean today. I mean, there has been multiple points where you can very clearly see Bio, Bio Grenade landing has been the difference maker. He's put it onto the back line. He's landed plenty onto Harbin as well. 
Beyond that, we've seen some brilliant sleep darts. I mean, statistically, MCD's keeping up. I don't think MCD is like really falling behind huge in terms of where the uh, the stats are. Okay, a little bit less healing, it's whatever. Deaths are the same. You've got two less spiral grenade kill, one less enemy slept. They're roughly the same in terms of stats, but when you look at the eye test for pure impact, and maybe it's because the charge are also winning and Piggy's getting a lot of work done on that tank, on the Winston specifically. Um, one of the glaring things that I saw on that last map of Hollywood was when Hanbin was going 1v1 versus Farway, and Farway was just not dying. He, he wasn't dying. Yep. Well supported by Zerni, I was going to say, but that dude lived forever. He did, and I, I, I don't think it's any mystery or, or secret that I'm a, a big Xerneas fan and have been for a very long time. Uh, but I, both of them, the whole team really is just performing out of their minds to a, a level that we had just could not comprehend. Uh, you know, the synergies that they're showing right now, it just looks damn near flawless. Uh, and it's great to see because again, you know, we, as much as I said, we want all teams to be able to compete and, and play close games against each other. We also want to see these teams that have stumbled in the last couple of years be able to rise up and be able to, to, to push back against the teams that have widely been dominating the circuit, whether it's in NA for, you know, the fuel or or for the dynasty and whatnot out here in APAC. Uh, we want to see those competitive sets from these teams that have been living in the other team's shadows for so very long. So this has been a fantastic start yeah. so far. and. I, you know, we can only hope that Dallas Fuel are going to be able to push back, turn this into an actual series, not get swept under the rug here at the beginning. But if they do, I think you kind of just have to expect that, okay, maybe this is a bit of a, you know, a, a time to shake the rust off, much like it is for you and I, given that it has been six sure. months since uh, the last time we were really commentating uh, yeah. this game. So maybe that'll be the case here for the side of the fuel as well. But uh, Guangzhou Charge, clearly no rust. They are a well-oiled machine. Yeah, I mean, you can, you can, I don't even, you wouldn't be able to convince me they took six months off. They look like they've been scrimming the entire off season. Uh, and maybe they have been, I don't know. But at this stage, we are going to be heading shortly into map number three, which was Havana, I believe. So if there is hope, this is where I'm going to give some hope in my back over towards the Dallas Fuel fans. Because you go to Havana, I think it's going to be Sigma territory. If there's one here or the Harbin is elite tier on, it is going to be the Sigma. And Piggy's going to have to be able to match up on towards that because... You know, if you were to ask me earlier who the better tank between uh, Piggy and Harbin was, I think it would have been pretty clear Harbin. Like, you definitely say Harbin. You put your money on that guy. But so far, as far as Winston goes, it's been Piggy so far. But, you know, yeah. we have the capability of seeing other heroes come through. We tried to play a little bit of Zarya here to, to unfortunately, this. not amazing avail. But on Havana, I, I definitely think it's going to be a Sigma matchup. It really should be. And with that, that's going to be Fuel's best chance. I mean, we'll have to see, but I, I mean, while I'm with you there in regard to, you know, seeing Hanbin playing that, that Sigma, Piggy is no slouch either when it comes down to playing that character. This is something that he was playing when he was over exactly. on the Outlaws and whatnot. And I, I think that either way, just given the way that Guangzhou Charge have been performing, you might even give Piggy the edge in this circumstance because the synergy hasn't been there for the side of the field. We'll have to just wait and see though as we do get ready to jump into this map and see whether or not this is going to be the end of our second map or if we can extend this to New Queen Street. So nighttime Havana here as well. Nighttime as Havana. you mentioned, you you can't uh, you certainly can't sleep on the Piggy Sigma, but it's another one of those situations where on paper it feels like it feels like it should be Harmbin winning this matchup, right? He's the way more sorry Sigma player. He's the guy that's, you know, won way more on the back of this hero, and I'm pretty sure they'll lock it in as Piggy's already locked it in. And I don't think Harm is going to shy away from that deal. And it will also, if I'm reading correctly, Sigma Double Flex typically ends up being the meta as well as the Woodermakers coming through. And that is something I mentioned earlier. Jimmy versus Edison on the Wooder. We've seen the Hanzo to Hanzo. Jimmy's look dominant on that. Is Jimmy going to be better on the Woodermaker as well? Because Jimmy also quite famous for his Woodermaker. That he is. I mean, you know, an opening uh, headshot at the beginning of their push on Hollywood, but, or on that, that overtime on Hollywood, but not much to read into there. Choice A1, going to be giving the Genji an attempt here where Sparkle wasn't able to find value. We'll see if he can. For now, yeah, oh, I've uh, been right there over on the Sigma. I want to note the small changes in composition. Obviously, you'll notice the Choice A1 Genji because we were having his POV up on screen there, but also Xerneas on the brig here as well for the defense. And that will tell you that yep. Guangzhou Charge want to play a little slightly more brawly version of Sigma composition where they want to get in the face of the Dallas field. It's not just about poke. Oh, playing right up against here, against Piggy, and he's going to be taken down. Bliss able to find the final shot. 
Mortality fields burned on both sides. Shield gets raised by Xerneas, denying that accretion stun coming across, but Sparkle finds the crossfire. The Storm Arrow's getting the elimination. Edison just pushing up here, riding the cart. So far, the only kill that we found here for this side of the Guangzhou charge is going to be Choi Se-Wan taking down MCD. So a very strong beginning yep. and a great push for the side of the Dallas Fuel. Last second contest should be possible, though, for the charge. Absolutely. And charge, just to speak on what happened in that last fight, they had their lamp forced out super early. It was broken super early as well. So while Hanbin survived with Bliss putting out the immortality field, Piggy, his immortality field coming through from far away, instantly deleted and Piggy falling shortly after that. And now Hanbin, very much ahead in terms of Gravitic Flux. Has to watch his HP pool though, because both Sparkle and Harmon under pressure at the moment. Bliss has ultimate. Bliss will have the first ultimate of the map. Okay, and Matrix does come through. Bliss popping that one instantly. Creation's done, not connecting on a Sparkle. And again, Piggy taking a bit of damage. Jimmy's going to be taken down as well now, so that back line for the Dallas Field will be breathing a lot more easily. Cowley Field cleaned up. Piggy trying to stay alive. Great deflect from Choice Awan. Let's take down Sparkle in point blank range. Creation going to be blocked. Barrier coming through, but now Cerny is falling. The healing going to be cut down far away. He's got the ult available. He's going to use it instantly. But I don't know if they're going to be able to survive this one. Slap back down to the ground. The immortality field not there far away. Ends up falling. Jimmy on the return. Hellward does find Bliss. The blade's full. Choice one looking for a target. It's accretions. It's the ground. Stays alive for a little bit longer than Han, but eventually he's able to go ahead and do some geometry and bounces some shots around the corner to finish them all. Hard, however, going to be halted. Oh my. It's a great headshot on the Jimmy. Challenging the Widow on a hard angle. Comes out on top. And I was going to say, I think Fuel do lose that fight. However, the final couple of kills coming on through, especially that one from Sparkle, definitely allows Dallas Fuel to maybe look towards a slight player advantage. It will depend on whether Grand Charge get the full fire back into play. It's a very slow regrouping here for the Dallas Fuel. So I think it will indeed be the 5v5 choice of one. Did a ton of work in that last fight on the Genji to be able to make sure that Grand Charge is going to be competitive. And now they have the ultimates. Again, the Immortality Field is going to be forced out, held now by Bliss as they have that transcendence to keep everybody alive. Choice A1, however, diving into the back line, finds Edison, MCD, and Sparkle both going to be taken out as well as Xerneas gets involved, gets his hands dirty once again. Shields race, keeps the block out from that accretion. It's going to be a team kill, and successful holds here continued by the Guangzhou Charge. And it was Piggy in the opening fight of the neutral. That was a crack in the dam that the Dallas Field were able to exploit this time around. Piggy, low HP, but he does not fall. Bends, but does not break. They're going aggro. The team fight. Just, yeah, like you're right. They just want to get straight into the Dallas Field. Might be a mistake, though. It would be a good pick on a Sparkle if they could have gotten it, but now the Immortality Field is going to be taken down as everyone's grouped up here in the side room. Sparkle fiercely pushing forward. Falls into the HP, man. Just stay alive. Far away. Choke out as well, and now will be eliminated. Bliss pops that amp matrix, and they instantly all fall apart. Chris and Juan able to come away with a parting gift kill there onto Edison, but widely, that is going to be it. The push should come through now. Putting up some extra walls inside that library to make it a duplex, and it works out well for Bliss. The fuel payload continues to push on forward. The last few stagger kills will come on in, and the A cap has been completed. And like I said a little bit earlier, it might be a mistake for Charge to go that aggressive. Had they gotten that one kill they were looking for, we'd be having a different conversation, but they were pushed out, they were red. The infrasight from Edison was up as well, so they saw the entire move from the charge, and that was all that needed to happen. Ooh, aggressive push coming in, though. Dallas Field trying to match them here onto the high ground. Grass coming out, Piggy trying to stay alive. Sparkle pulls the blade, instantly finds far away, looks for a little bit more, a couple more slashes will finish him off. Piggy goes down. Jimmy Choice they want able to find two picks of their own, but the cart is going to get pushed forward. Jimmy gets a tap here across on the Han Bin. Grass buff once again gets a little minor amount of shielding. It looks like they can't over pursue to try to get the punish here onto the tank. It would have been a massive pick for them. But at the same time, they'll just be happy to have some kind of forward control now to try to re-aggress onto the cart. I also want to talk about the fact that Edison's swapping over towards the Hanzo now, which is preferable for B. Once we get back over towards C, oh, assuming Jimmy. the push does continue in cap, it's much better for the Widowmaker. Jimmy survives, so he's not going to change just yet. That's a decent lift on the flux, though. Yeah, pretty big one. They try to clear out the immortality build fast enough, and Han then will be taken down. Jimmy with a nice headshot there on the Widow. Finds the tank. Far away, under fire, however. He'll eventually fall to Sparkle's hand. That's both supports now. Going to run back in. Piggy going to fall oh my as God, well. Sparkle. Sparkle, yeah, just cleaning him up. Deflect goes out. Jimmy has to pull back away from that high ground position. And once again, it's going to be the fuel finding themselves onto the cart about halfway to be. And that was looking like Charge winning the fight, but Sparkle turns it back around. Piggy in the middle of nowhere. With Harmon going down early, you were thinking it was going to be lights out. Still holds on the graphitic flex and in a position now where Dallas Will can set up for this next window from Bliss on high ground. Jimmy, can he find something here? I'll find out later. Wait from Jose Juan. Mortality field forced out. Waits it. Nice patience there from the side of Jose Juan. Allows for his teammate to go ahead and clear the way. Finds two kills off the back of it. Now they just look to finish off Hanbin. A minute remaining here. 
Fel's Fuel just have to go for the quick reset. Sparkle still hovering forward, needs to die. Otherwise, he's going to get very split spawn away from the rest of his team. Finally, does go down. He's extra time now bought here for the Glongshow Charge. While Sparkle was on a mission, there's Choice and one that actually completes his Ring Blade coming on through. And you know, despite, again, Genji maybe not being the most favorable pick in the current Overwatch 2 meta, for a point like Havana B, where you got so many areas to wall climb and dash on through, play around geometry, Really a good position for Choi to get his work done. And he certainly has been able to do that with that fight when 30 seconds, in fact, less than that remaining for the Dallas Fuel final push on board. Yep, trying to get in on the flank. They could just go ahead and circumnavigate the charge a little bit. You can see Choi Wan watching that high ground angle. The charge chasing? Him? Him access to the car. Drop down. He's looking for Choi Wan. Zerni's going to fall. MCD now finds Choi Wan. Yeah, the charge chase, but they fall into the trap. They end up getting taken down. Now Piggy going to fall. Man. Two percent away from having that flux ready to go. And that is going to come back and bite them because while it's going I... to be overtime here for Dallas Fuel, that should be the push to be. I mean, that's a huge mistake. Why chase into the courtyard if you're the Guangzhou Charge? Just hold the chokes. You know Dallas Fuel have to be the ones to push the choke. The team that ends up pushing through choke is the team in the weaker position. So Guangzhou Charge literally put themselves in the weaker position. They do, but they're going to get themselves back in. The nice swap from Jose Wan gives them the sim. They managed to contest this card with three meters left to go. Now the Flux comes out. Piggy. Down the field, taken away. However, Sparkle with a blade finds both supports. Far away, Xerneas. Both hit the floor. Jimmy on the Cassidy. Three to three. CD, but they need so much more than this, and Jimmy is delivering at the moment. Finds another. Gets the shot across. Sparkle's going to be taken down. Now that leaves Jose Wan on 1v1 to Sahanvin. 150 HP or so. A little bit of shielding coming through. He cleans them up. The OT bleeds away. They only give up a single extra meter in that fight. Two meters shy of B, Dallas Fuel yeah. are held. I mean, what a save coming through from the Gondro Charge because that was looking disastrous. I'm not going to lie. I'm not pleased about the way they kind of threw the fight outdoors. No reason to, ch to chase and fight Dallas Fuel in the courtyard. They could have just held the, the, the entrances, but they come back in the next fight. TP's coming on through. I think Choice One actually changed over to a Sim just to TP them in. And this is a sparkle play from a little bit earlier on where you know we do see the, the fact that once again i reiterate genji not bad on havana b specifically you eventually you change over a couple of heroes you get into the final fight of b sim tps a bunch of your team and jimmy comes back on a cast he gets what was it a 3k i believe yeah ends up being a 1v1 between hanbin and Choi, and there's no healers on either team with the mobility of a choice in one's tracer the lack of hp on hanbin choice in one he had the patience to play there as well because if it does get drawn out into a 1v1 an extended 1v1 when no one dies let's say it's a new, it's a complete stalemate no one kills each other charge have the respawn advantage their players have a much shorter run back to the payload than dallas fuel so even if it just goes to a stalemate i think charge get the one the only way they cap is if harman just straight up wins a 1v1 which i think versus a tracer incredibly difficult to do all right well now Need a hell of a defense. We saw them put a bit of a fight there on Hollywood and see how they fare on Havana. As we come back into this again, near mirrored compositions. The big difference being MCD sticking with the Zenyatta. It's Choice A1. Oh, instantly gets yep. in there. Deflects the headshot right back onto Edison. A great first kill as Jimmy hunts for more. Pops up around the corner. Doesn't find too much of anything. Hanbin gets knocked down to about half HP, but the kill's getting pumped out. And MCD just just trying to build up these ults. The Very cooldowns broken. are running out, but you lost the grasp as well, Hanbin. Has the lamp been deployed? I don't know. Either way, far away going to be taken down. Edison, coming back through, does manage to peel some pressure. Gets rid of that healing. Definitely slows the roll of Guangzhou Charge. Sparkle goes on the hunt, just trying to catch Choice I want on these flanks. The fact that Hanbin survives it is incredible, and I'm not too sure. I, I might have missed it, but I don't know if Blissy used the lamp or not. If he didn't, I mean, <laughs> the cojones on him to, to just believe that Harmon was going to live after breaking shield and losing grasp. It looked like Harmon was dead to rights, but surviving means they get to fight another day and hold on to that B and allow Edison to come back and get that pick. Chunked out. Appreciate not going to find the stun. Jimmy with a headshot takes out MCD. The healing now very much cut down. Sparkle and Han been both likely to crumble under the pressure as as well when he gets eliminated by Xerneas who comes up with three kills of his own in the fight he managed to even get the punish not allowing sparkle to retreat back and offer up some healing to his supports Hart now pushing forward into a time bank gonna get bumped up nearly five minutes and they don't even barely to... come to you know I mean they, they don't even have to complete it but it's damn near close I mean it might as well be a completion but they don't have to go to C I think is the most important thing here so you can just play purely 4B 
formulated compositions purely for B, which won't be really different from what they're doing now. Maybe Jimmy over towards the Hanzo. We'll see. Time will tell. It's far away. And Bliss both have windows available. Bliss and Dallas Field have high ground, but they don't have a player. No, they don't. And, I mean, Immortality Field used as a last ditch effort just to try to run away. Bliss and Hanbin will be able to escape, at least into the side room for now. Play? Pinch is coming through. Rally gets popped. Zernius leading the charge forward. Immortality Field going to be taken down, but so is Hanbin. And it is just a bloodbath in the stairwell. Far away with two. Piggy with one. The cart still pushing forward. Guangzhou oh, charging, right. but they will on. not be denied. The blade pulls. Fights Why? him. That last slash into the shop from far away. Hits the punish on the sparkle for some added stagger. And they are just holding so far forward. Now the fuck's going to be invested from both teams. The drop down the Immortality Field is there, but Bliss is instantly met with death as soon as the Immortality Field goes away. Sparkle now trying to get himself on the opposite side of the team. Trying to draw some attention away from the spawn room doors. And it looks like it is working a bit of a Man. treat. Far away and Xerneas do end up falling, but they have to get back and touch this cart because Jimmy is just riding it through. Pushes it right up onto the finish line. Just a couple meters left to go, and eventually Sparkle is, manages to arrive to stop it. But three and a half minutes still remaining. 3.39 meters away from victory are the Guangzhou charge. It's a ton of push. They did it in a, in a fairly unconventional way, pushing all the way to spawn on Havana B. I don't think I've seen that before. That's a very rare thing to do because it's extremely dangerous and a massive risk for the Guangzhou charge to take. Considering it was also 4v5 with Jimmy Solo pushing the payload right, so... Want to charge burning the bulk of their ultimates they have to be concerned about the fact that they're resource wise completely behind yes they have three minutes left yes they get the payload within about three-ish meters they got nothing to play through so they're relying on picks here can jimmy or choice one find that opening pick again now let's just spam out on the right clicks of range just trying to farm up the blade as quickly as choice one can Launcher charge to start finding their footing once again, aggressing over towards the card. Sparkle, however, caught. Okay. That's the blade now taken down. The rally instantly popped by MCD, just trying to get the rest of the team alive. But now there's this amp matrix that they have to try to play through. Great headshot for Medicine, however, takes him down off that high ground, cuts the healing in half. And now Xerneas will join him in the grave. Both supports eliminated and not burned out. Sparkle lives, holds onto the blade for a future fight, but Iggy starts cleaning things up, finds two. Flux comes through, drops him to the ground. It's enough for the kill. The fuel should be able to hold off that. That was a huge pickup from Edison. That actually leads the way in terms of a domino effect where you take down Farway, he doesn't get to use his window. And because Farway's not on the high ground, pumping in heals long range to the low ground, he doesn't keep Xerneas alive. So had Farway lived not being taken down by Edison, Xerneas would have also lived and it's a completely different fight for the Guangzhou charge. The Edison saves the day with the pickoff that ensures that Adele's field has more time to play through two minutes left and they still got ults. Okay, aggressive push forward here with the Ant Matrix to clear out the Immortality Field. Xerneas nearly falling. Rally now going to be popped as he tries to stay alive. This time comes across Big the end, being taken down. Yep, huge accretion from Anvin connecting to be able to find that elimination. Flux now is going to be invested though. Guangzhou charge. They want to play this one out aggressively, but they need to find some extra kills if they want to get back over onto the cart. Blade gets pulled, dashed through onto Edison. Joyce A1 gets that first elimination. Cuts across. MCD taken down. Bliss gone as well. The push. Hanbin in a sliver of HP and he's so Sparkle far away. Touch. There's no way. No one. Someone's going to have to touch this one, but Hanbin ends up dying. Sparkle rejoins the fight. Back over onto the tracer for the recall. Takes him back out of the fight. He's being locked in position and Jimmy finds oh a final God. headshot that finished the ordeal. You see hands in the air, a celebration that's well-deserved. The Guangzhou charge in their opening matchup. Take down the defending champions, the Dallas Fuel, with a 3-0 victory. I said it on map one, I'll say it again, but the Guangzhou charge Dallas are an absolute shambles. Had it just been a Guangzhou charge opening the pole win and the Dallas Fuel come back for a 3-1, I still think maybe the Dallas would have been slightly in shambles given they expected Guangzhou charge to be extremely weak. But those rumors have been false. Those accusations are not true at all. Guangzhou Charge, utter domination. Out the gate, first match that they have in the 2023 season. Piggy with the hands up as well, waving. My goodness, what a play from absolutely everybody on this Charge team today. I, I did not expect that Dallas Fuel were, go, were gonna go down 0-3. Most people would not have expected Dallas Fuel to even lose the series, let alone lose 0-3. I mean, you think about it, going back across all the maps played, they really were only to get the game two objectives for themselves. It was a 2-0 on Nepal. They got the cap on, uh, or no, maybe three objectives, because they got the cap on B, I believe. And then, no, they pushed to the end. Never mind. I'm losing my mind. I'm too old for this, Admiral. They got the, they got the full push on Hollywood, then it went into OT. That's why, why I'm getting mixed up yeah. here. But either way, they didn't get many objectives, is my point. They could only get the A cap here on Havana. Couldn't quite make it to B. Guangzhou charge. I mean, I feel like a lot of times you see teams playing as aggressively as them and getting regularly punished for it. 
We saw that maybe once or twice here for them, where Dallas Fuel were able to get themselves back in. But widely, the aggression yeah. just, it suited them so well. I mean, even the, I would say, over-aggression at times, which which they are going to have to look at in future, because I think it's punishable, where they just run into the Dallas Fuel spawn. I'm talking about Havana B there. That was unreal. I, you do not normally see that in any gameplay, especially not at this level. But they did it anyway. 4v5s through all their all, all the ultimates on the table. And it allowed Jimmy to get the push on through for basically the entirety of B. But it did set them behind, I would say, for the next two-ish flights, which is why it is a risk. Let's talk about its player of the match, though. A player that did not disappoint. He had a standout performance in the 2022 season. Now coming through in 2023 on the Hanzo, on the Widowmaker as well. And specifically, I want to say Seth on the Hanzo, especially on those first two maps. Just utter domination. The highlight reels was coming in nice and clean. Yeah, and then going back over to the other sniper, playing the Widowmaker, still looked damn good from him. Uh, I, I think that when we were around this point in the game, it was pretty difficult to make a decision, you know, who was going to be player of the match. I think you genuinely could have made an argument for just about anybody on the side of the Glock yeah, to charge. Sure. Far away having a fantastic game. Xerneas as well. Uh, Choi Sewan was right there alongside Jimmy, helping to set up these kills. Piggy looked incredible coming out of the Winston, also on the Sigma. But in the end, we had to give it to Jimmy because it was just so crisp. The impact that he was able to find, some of those clutch moments, the swap over yeah. onto the Cassidy for the 3K to deny the cap on point B. It was just, a, uh, yeah, a huge highlight reel uh, from Jimmy, who was just finding an impact on every single pick that he played. And this was a guy that was predominantly benched in the 2021 season behind the Jimmu lead combo. It just really wasn't his season. That wasn't going to be the year that he was going to shine. He was going to come back in 2022 last year to play for the Guangzhou Charge as an ex Chengdu member. And comes in late in the season, plays majority of Soja, and benches a Pritter who never even got game time on the Guangzhou Charge, despite being one of the more hyped up rookies coming into the 2023 season. And for good reason, because Jimmy really proved himself last year. And now, I mean, he's done proving himself. Now he's just cementing it. Yeah. I mean, averaging well over a, a kill per minute there, as far as the eliminations are concerned, nearly matched in final blows. Just uh, a fantastic star set of performance here from Jimmy. And it's really setting the stage for he and the rest of the Guangzhou charge. I think a lot of people, are, ourselves included, probably were ready to just be like, okay, you know, Guangzhou, we'll see how they do. But it's probably going to be, you know, a yeah. middling performance, if not bottom of the standings. Uh, no, all eyes now on these guys because, good Lord, they look great. It was an optimistic situation for Guangzhou. It was like, yeah, I feel good about this team, but, you know, a little bit of trepidation in there because you don't want to you don't want to get too hype about because you're not too sure. Guangzhou started to do well last year, but then you take a six-month break, anything can happen. Dallas are defending champions, right? It's probably going to be a rough start for the Guangzhou Charge. Maybe they'll, you know, they'll find their groove a little bit later in the season. Maybe be a middle of the pack team this time around. The Shanghai are not looking too hot to trot, but Guangzhou Charge, I mean, straight out the gate, they're like, you know what, just put us number one. Just put us in the top two straight away. Why not? Uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> they're certainly making a strong argument for themselves, but uh, pretty nasty performance. And... I'm just hoping that we have even more surprises Dude, because of I, I course, can't wait until NA wakes up and sees this result. Well, there's that too. That's going to be a, a really fun reaction from, you know, Avast and everybody on the desk and whatnot, where they go back and rewind and try to break down this action of the pre-show. Uh, but I'm hoping that we have that we've had this little surprise here from the side of the Guangzhou charge that looked way better than we could have anticipated because we have another team that has some low expectations surrounding them coming up into our next series. And I'm hoping that they can deliver in similar fashion because that is, of course, going to be the Hangzhou spark going up against the Shanghai Dragons. And it feels like... I mean, this is quite literally since 2018, the first time that we're coming into a season saying, I don't think Shanghai Dragons are going to be that strong. And I'm hoping that they could do something to go ahead and, and turn that narrative around. I mean, I said APAC was going to be competitive and straight out the gates, we have, uh, you know, Soul Infernal, who are kind of hyped up in scrims, but Dynasty taking them down at a very close three and two. We have Dallas Fuel, who, you know, we expected a lot more out of against the Gondor Charge that had very low expectations to be completely fair from just about everybody and and now you know a, a low expectation shanghai dragons where let's see what fleta can do on this tank and let's see if hangzhou spark with their potentially you know mvp lineup on the dps between shy and leave can can really play up to the level of hype and expectation behind it 
Well, time will tell as we do get ready to go, uh, you know, into that series in a little bit here. We just got a couple more minutes to chat away before we throw to a break and then get ready to dive into that set. But yeah, I think that this is a great result, obviously not so much for the fuel fans, but for the Guangzhou charge, something to very much cheer about since you said, you know, 2020, the best looking, uh, the best look that they've had. So we'll see if that carries forward or if this is going to be a flash in the pan in you know, future weeks. But for now, we are going to get ready to go to a break. And when we return, we will have that third and final match of our opening day, the Hangzhou Spark going up against the Shanghai Dragons. So don't go anywhere, guys. It's been lovely to see you all again.